What's clout chasers? Oh, let me tell you about what a clout chaser is. Cloud Chase is one of those people that I beat you one time, tell everybody in the world about it, and then also come to your stream, listen to what you say. If you say anything that they don't like, they're going to go on the internet and tell everybody how mean you are and how you're downplaying their skill. And then everybody's gonna feel bad about you. I'm like, oh man, he said that you're random? Oh man, that's not cool. That's a bad player. What's good guys? So I'm gonna go ahead and go some real talk today. So is seeding cheating? Is it rigging brackets? So we're gonna talk about my thoughts and why I think seeding in like competitive sports in general is a great healthy thing just naturally for everybody, right? I mean, people who work hard and be consistent and even people who fly all the way to the country and playing somebody that they just didn't fly to that event for or just playing anybody that you just know literally in your house, but look, before we jump into it, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and let me know how you guys feel about the video, and let's jump into it right now. All right, man, so look, a lot of people were talking about frame data, a lot of people were talking about seeding is cheating, it's so crazy. I can't believe I actually heard this. Seeding is cheating. So I'm gonna go ahead and just talk about it. The fighting game community needs to let go of seeding. It's actually bracket rigging. rigging. I'll stand on that forever. Randomize the bracket and separate it by region. When you go to a tournament, you have to be ready for all. Beginners, random, a sea of average. Clout chasers, the unorganized, your training partner, the top player you never face, rival, past champions, the OGs. Seeding protects you for the big part of this list. Actually, it actually does not protect you from that. There's so many times I've ran into punk. I'm So many times I ran into like the same players that I play all the time that are actually really good it does not protect you from that actually now however depending on certain standpoints when an upset do happen you actually happen to run against these people that so-called the random the cf average clout chases blah, blah 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 it actually is the opposite everybody wants to see their favorite player yes upsets are fun to watch but people want to watch their favorite player so if all of like the best players are all in a bracket and that event doesn't get run then what are we watching well even even pl even saying that but the thing that i think is unfair is that you being who you are you you were getting seated and you played some of the best players early and like you know you lost so i don't understand like where that even comes from you know i'm, I'm pretty confused about that but i mean to even answer it like it's not it's not bracket rigging because the only time it's bracket rig rigging is when the players like me are like seed in the bracket, right? Like if I'm playing and let's say, for example, I never like TO before, I never did like any of like these like running brackets and things like that, then it's like rigging because now I'm just trying to make it as comfortable as possible for me. And also to be real with you, I mean, people already rig brackets already because they want to see their favorite friend like do well. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to throw anybody on the bus, but that has happened and I've overheard it. And I'm just like, damn, that's pretty crazy that you're doing that. But whatever, you know, it's their tournament, right? <laughs> it's their tournament. So whatever. Anyways, go back to what the actual point really matters is the, the, the bracket gets randomized under the seated players. So it doesn't even matter. You're still going to fight these people after the bracket is randomized after the seated players. So I don't understand how is it rigging? What's clout chasers? Oh, let me tell you about what a clout chaser is. Clout chaser is one of those people that I beat you one time, tell everybody in the world about it, and then also come to your stream, listen to what you say. If you say anything that they don't like, they're going to go on the internet and tell everybody how mean you are and how you're downplaying their skill. And then everybody's gonna feel bad about you. I'm like, oh man, he said that you're random? Oh man, that's not cool. That's a bad player. There's another thing too, it's like, imagine being consistent, right? And your your whole reward of being consistent is like, you just get to fight random things all the time. You're still gonna have to fight random things, but now you now you have the urge to fight the person that got in grand finals next round. And in what, in what shape or form? Because then another thing that started happening is what if your rival is in region, in, in the same region? What if all of these lists of people that you're saying, your training partner, the top player you never face, all in your region. But then you send resumes the bracket and separate it by region. It still doesn't, you're still dodging this. 
<laughs> you're still dodging some of the stuff. So it, it, it kind of doesn't make sense. So I naturally just think that as long as you see the people, the way you make it fair is you see it by the players who are good and consistent. You see it by, you know, overseas people and then, you know, them coming out here and then you separate it from that. And then you separate it from regions for all the people who are coming through. And then you randomize the bracket. The seed that the mat the seeds really matter is like the ten the ten or seven people. Those those are the people that matter. Everybody else is random anyway. Like I'm gonna keep it a buck. I'm at a point where tournament organizers are never gonna give me an easy bracket ever. All of my brackets that I had to play, I had to play somebody mad god like all the time. So at this point, I don't even care. I don't even care anymore. You know why, bro? The seeding is already so up anyway because of online because everybody use online seating for offline seating so it's already messed up so at this point everybody a top player you a top player sorry's a top player dln you a top player er assume parasite top player too bro i don't know so anytime somebody tell me yo you got this person in your in your role i'm like who is it oh he he does this in online i'm like all right cool that's all i can say i never heard of him in my life er top player is such a given opera it's such a given thing now it's so like just given. Like here, here you go. You want you want a tournament like three times in a row online? Boom. There you go. You got you got it. Oh, my I'm a I'ma gas my friend up. You know, you know what the era we go for now? We we just gas our friend up. That's all we do. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go on the internet. I'm telling you guys, horse human, best player in the world. Watch you get seated from that logic right there. And watch you become a top player right there too. Automatic. Boom. In there. Even though you got like, boom, you already in there. What's the point of seeding? I never understood it. So let me explain to you. Robo, let's just say your brother, right? Let's just say you have a brother. Let's just say, yo, yo let's go to this tournament. Yeah, man, we're going to go to the tournament. We're going to enter bracket. We're going to play all these great players. What if your brother was your first round? You played your brother. You flew all the way to a country or like a state. You took like an eight plus hour flight to play the person that you sat next to and slept next to. On the flight, you get off, boom. You accept your fate and take it out. So you're telling me that you're you're okay. You're telling me you are okay to spend 15 plus hundred dollars to fight your brother that you could have played at home. You're telling me you're okay with that. And you're you're fine with that of taking your L. You're telling me that. All these players that are being consistent, it works like stats, right? You you separate it by consistency, right? What's consistent? Obviously not playing your brother first round. Clearly, these players has been mad consistent. So they're going to be placed higher. People want to watch these players, right? So you sort it by statistics. You get what I'm saying? I'm going to keep it a buck with you. Do you honestly think a Strive tournament would have crazy views if any of the people that know people for Strive was there? Honestly, let's be real. Would, would, that, would that tournament actually get numbers? Exactly. You watch Strive to, to watch, you know, me and Justin, right? Now, let's just say, for example, like, let's just say randomly. Pop 8 is just random name simulator. Yeah, Fex Lex 53,000, you know what I mean? All these, all these names, right? Wait, Anji. You, th you think people will be watching it? No. Nobody will be watching that. Shit. No. I'm not saying the players aren't bad. But also, there's certain people that just bring entertainment and enjoyment watching those specific players play. I don't know. In big tournaments, I feel like you see the same people in Top 8, though, regardless of seeding. I disagree with that because if you literally made a bracket of those top eight people all in the same bracket, that means that those same people will not be in top eight. <laughs> there you go. Like if they all in one bracket, that logic doesn't work. That's saying everybody in the world is in one bracket. Well, that's not how that works. You can't play. You you can't play in one big old bracket. Top player privilege. What is the privilege? What is the privilege of being higher seeded? You're going to have to fight all of these anyway. There's nothing, there's no privilege. The privilege is you are separated for the people who are consistent, but you still have to fight all of this. What if there was a top player in a random game that I didn't know about? He was an OG. He never played Guilty Gear before. He didn't get seated. He was in my bracket. That's the OGs. What if Reinhardt randomly, evil champion, won multiple champions, randomly decided to be like, yo, I want to play Strive. Past champions in my bracket. What if a rival that is unknown that nobody knows about, but I know about that person because I know that person is ridiculous, and then he's randomly in my bracket. Rivals. The top player you never face. What if there was a top player in another game that randomly was decided, yo, I want to play this game. He randomized in your bracket. 
you still have to fight them. With the concept of big names being in different brackets, they still be in top eight. Yes and no. It all depends. There also can be upsets. Right now, you'll see you're seeing consistency right now. But I'm telling you, like it's all it's it's going to change. I, I'm telling you, the moment international starts flying in, everything changes. It's privilege no matter how you cut it. How is be how is earning something a privilege? You telling me a person who went through college twelve years to get their double uranium masters is privilege? Yeah, but there's no. It's, it's nothing bad about it, but you can't call it privilege. You can't call it privilege. There's a difference between privilege and earned. Personally, this is why people don't, I don't like when people tell me, I don't say, I don't say anything, but I don't like when people say you deserve it because I don't deserve it. I earned that because deserving is like privilege. Yo, you earned that. Congratulations. Well earned. People get deserved as like privilege. Oh, you must deserve everything then, huh? You deserve this? Nah, I earned that. Every time I hear I earned that, all I can think about which Guilty Gear player is a liar video. So <laughs> 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 I remember that. <laughs> Why not se just separate tournaments into seating style and tournaments of non seating style tournaments? Well, that's the thing. I promise you, anybody who gets seated well are probably not going to go to that tournament. Honestly. So, yes, if it's not seated or anything like that, people are not going to care. At that point, just the only thing, the only thing that shouldn't be seated is like invitationals. Invitationals should be random. When you're in a 60-man invitational, you should be playing against everybody. Simple as that. There's definitely people who can stop going to tourneys and still get those seeders, which is pop. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I agree. There, there is. But that's the thing. It's like there's some people that see tournaments in the most non-good way. Like some people be like, "Oh, my friend, I know he's good, so I'm gonna definitely put him higher than than this person." I think y'all assume people are random just because they're no name. I disagree with that. There's mad people I never heard of that played mad good. And I'm like, damn, it, he actually playing the game. Just because you're a no name doesn't mean you're a random. There's certain emphasis that you could just watch somebody and understand what they're doing. I've congratulated people I never heard of. I'm like, damn, this guy actually is mad solid. Yeah, no name is completely different. I'd be like, damn, who is this dude? I never heard of this guy. He's mad good, okay. For example, Bean. Bean is a prime example. I never heard of Bean until Guilty Gear Strive. And I'm like, yo, who is Bean? This guy is actually pretty good. I'm like, damn, all right, Bean, okay. Yeah, never called him a random. I'm just like, who is this dude? I never heard of him, but he was good because he did something different from everybody else. But you know what's crazy? Let's say, for example, this person right here, let's just say, you know, he won. You know, let's say he, he beat Phenom. What? People gonna be like, yo, he deserved it. What? He deserved it. And you know what's crazy? Some of these same players, they'll beat a good player, and you know what happened? Straight to losers bracket once again. And I understand that might be your boy. That might be your boy. And it's cool to root for your boy. But it's also also you have to be realistic. Yeah, you take you take over. Yeah, technically, actually, when you think about it. Technically, yo, Ambi, you actually brought up a good point. If a person, a random person just beats or like whatever the list of perfect legends, like all of these people actually take the seed of the top seed. So technically, now you have to win. So what is people complaining about? You act, yeah, that makes perfect sense. You actually, th these, these list of people actually takes the top seed. So it's not rigging. So if you lose, is it really easy? So if you if you if you beat the number one seed and then you lose, is it is it rigging? If that person loses, bro, that you know what it is, bro. I I generally think that just people, it blows my mind that people don't understand how this works, and then they and then they say false information, and then all of a sudden the false information now it, it is a thing where people can try to argue that being top seeded means you're privileged, which blows my mind. You're telling me a person who is consistent is privileged. 